SLD icing contains the larger, heavier droplets, which have more inertia and can coat much more of the aircraft surfaces. This is true regardless of aircraft size. SLD accretions are of particular concern on wing and tail surfaces. Unlike the smaller cloud-sized droplets that strike within the protected regions, larger droplets can impact from the leading edge to well aft of the ice-protected regions. While the de-icing or anti-icing protection systems will clear these areas, the ice that is formed aft will remain. This can form a ridge at or aft of the protected non-protected junction. This change in the shape of the flight surface may not be immediately dangerous, but could become so during configuration changes or when enhanced performance is required, such as approach and landing, a missed approach, or an emergency situation. This is why SLD icing can be substantially more hazardous than normal icing. The ridge and extensive ice formation on non-protected areas of the airframe can lead to a substantial increase in drag. For propeller-driven aircraft, this can result in a situation where thrust is no longer sufficient to maintain level flight, and a descent must be initiated to preserve airspeed. SLD accumulations, particularly the ice ridge aft of the protected areas, may also significantly alter the wing's lift characteristics. The ridge will disrupt the airflow and create a region of separated flow. Wind tunnel tests were conducted on a NACA 23012 airfoil with a simulated SLD ice shape. The measured lift and angle of attack show a dramatic decrease in the maximum lift capability and stall angle. Flight tests in natural SLD icing with a Twin Otter aircraft substantiate this degradation. Here are the lift versus angle of attack curves, comparing a clean wing to a freezing rain and freezing drizzle encounter. For these particular encounters, the maximum lift was cut nearly in half. This greatly reduced maximum lift translated to roughly a 30% increase in stall speed. Note these results are airfoil specific. Your aircraft may respond differently. These SLD accumulations may affect aircraft handling characteristics as well. Especially on aircraft with unboosted controls, an ice ridge in front of a control surface can lead to unusual or abnormal control responses. If the separation bubble grows aft, it may cause the control surface to either auto-deflect or become ineffective and lead to a roll or pitch upset. The extensive ice accumulation typical of large droplets may be helpful in visually detecting an SLD encounter. A generic cue cited in the ADs is unusually extensive ice accreted on the airframe in areas not normally observed to collect ice. As common visual cues are identified next, it should be noted that some of these may not be available in your aircraft. On some aircraft, the most immediate and obvious visual cue of SLD is ice forming on unheated or unprotected cockpit side window panels. Another visual cue is a ridge of ice on the wing at the protected unprotected junction or ice aft of the protection system. Of course, a normal icing encounter would accrete entirely within the protected region. Photographs of NASA's icing research airplane show how ice can form beyond the areas protected by the pneumatic de-icing boots. Icing tanker tests of the ATR-72 conducted shortly after the Roselawn accident also illustrate this ridge. After testing, the ATR-72 was modified with a larger de-icer boot that provided more cord-wise protection. Aircraft with heated leading edges may also experience ridge formation aft of the heated areas. Here are images from a research test in NASA Glenn's icing research tunnel. A thermal heat system at flight conditions was tested in an SLD environment. Note the ridge beyond the protected region. On turboprop aircraft, propeller spinners are another area to monitor. Compare the SLD versus normal icing accretions. Note how much further aft the ice appears in the SLD case. Other visual cues of SLD may also include unusual or more extensive ice formations than normal on windshield wipers, control horns, nacelles, winglets, or on smaller aircraft, wing struts. 
Finally, visible rain or droplets that splash or splatter on impact below zero degrees C ambient air temperature are also signs of large droplet icing. When and where can you expect to find SLD? This map depicts the potential of encountering SLD conditions in North America in the winter. It is based on surface observations and balloon soundings gathered over a 14-year period and analyzed by NCAR. While the SLD potential shifts predictably in latitude and altitude throughout the year, there are consistent regions where you are more likely to find SLD. These are in the Pacific Northwest and in a wide swath from the Southern High Plains through the Great Lakes region into the Canadian Maritimes. While this map shows the hot spots for SLD, it is the local atmospheric conditions that determine whether or not you'll have an SLD encounter. This study also found that for the most part, SLD conditions were less than 3,000 feet deep, whether they were at the surface or at altitude. Furthermore, SLD was found mostly below 12,000 feet. Finally, understanding how SLD develops in the atmosphere may assist you in developing your avoidance and exit strategies. There are two SLD formation mechanisms, temperature inversion and collision coalescence. Temperature inversions are typically associated with warm and stationary fronts. Ahead of these fronts, snow falls into above freezing air and melts, forming liquid precipitation. The liquid precipitation continues to fall into freezing temperatures below, forming freezing rain and, occasionally, freezing drizzle. In some cases, the rain or drizzle freezes to form ice pellets that fall to the surface. In this case, the greatest potential for encountering SLD is from the bottom of the above freezing layer all the way to the surface. Research indicates this layer is generally less than 3,000 feet deep, but it has been observed up to 7,000 feet deep. Pilots are more likely, however, to encounter SLD formed by collision coalescence. This process, recently recognized as an aviation hazard, occurs when droplets collide within a cloud and coalesce into larger droplets. Research has shown that SLD clouds of this type are usually relatively warm, low-altitude clouds. Look for cloud top heights below 12,000 feet and cloud top temperatures warmer than about minus 12 degrees C. In this case, the SLD layer is usually less than 3,000 feet deep. Be aware, however, that this type of SLD can occur above 12,000 feet. Regardless of how the SLD is formed, exit strategies may require larger altitude changes. While SIGMETs identify areas of potential severe icing, there are tools that better pinpoint areas and altitudes where SLD may form. These tools are available on the Internet from the Aviation Weather Center. One is at the Aviation Digital Data Service. On the icing page, you can check the SLD potential in addition to the icing potential at various altitudes. At the same time, you can check for airmets, sigmets, and icing pyreps. You can also select the flight path tool and check for icing along your intended route. Convenient altitude displays of the same SLD and icing potential data are also available. 